Design of an apartment, space, color, style. Part 1. In order to create a harmonious, convenient interior in one's own apartment, firstly, it is necessary to plan a living space on paper. As experience shows, drawing up of a design project is better to divide into a number of stages, taking into account some general rules at that. Organization of space is both the most complex, and the most interesting stage for an inventor and a designer should awake within you. And the less symmetric area of an apartment is, the more actively the inventor's idea should work. For example, if there are small rooms in an apartment, it is not necessary to block them up with wardrobes, it is better to move all the wardrobes to the corridor or the hall, and use mirrors and local lighting in addition to the basic one more actively in the rooms. While planning the living space of your apartment or house, it is necessary to arm with a pencil and paper and make up a detailed plan with the exact sizes of rooms, door and window apertures, height of walls, etc. Otherwise, a bar sofa or a chest of drawers can simply not blend in the space intended for it. The next stage is a color solution. It is necessary to take this question just as serious. Skillfully using a color scale and decoration of the dwelling, it is possible to achieve a good psychological effect, positively influencing on a condition and mood of visitors and members of the household. Paint spares certain energy, color can comfort, stimulate, inspire and even heal. Before making a final decision as to the color, pay attention. What cardinal point the windows are oriented at, if to the north it is recommended to use a color scale and warm color tones, if to the south, then cold ones. The next stage, determination of style, texture and light. Generally, in design of interiors elements of a rather large number of historical styles are used. It can be the Baroque, Rococo, Classics, Pseudo-Gothic, the Victorian style, the Modernist style, Art Deco, constructivism, minimalism, high-tech and, finally, eclecticism. It is clear, that the Baroque, Rococo, Pseudo-Gothic are appropriate for country houses or spacious apartments with high ceilings. The Baroque and Rococo are characterized by wide and volumetric floristic stucco moldings, painted ceilings, gilt details of decor, fabric wallpapers, a marble mosaic of floors, armchairs and sofas fitted with silk a refined color scale which is characterized not by basic colors rather than their complex tones. Creating a gothic interior, it will be correct to upholster walls with oak panels with carved slats and decorate one of the walls with a goblin tapestry displaying a stage from hunting or, say, a performance of troubadours. A table in the gothic style should be rough and primitive, a bed, in the same vein, with a ball dock and uncarved columns. But the most important thing here is a free through and dashing space, elevating force of emptiness which is spiritualized by stained glass windows. For those keen on the English classical style, the Victorian interior, a mix of classicism, Roman motifs, Gothic styles, Rococo, the Empire style, Oriental arabesques and Asian exotic will be very interesting. The English feeling of measure has allowed to consolidate all this variety which is shown in subtleties of semitones and color scores. In such a house a spacious hall looks as a high-grade room with a monumental carved table, a mirror in a carved frame, a large chest of drawers, pure glass table, a striking long case clock, a sprawling hat tree with iron hooks, a cell for umbrellas and newspapers. Walls are planks with panels from either mahogany or oak, and the ceiling is decorated with a floristic stucco moldy. A visiting card of a Victorian house is a drawing room with its sofas and armchairs and a dominant rococo. Onto the fireplace porcelain vases and decorative dishes are usually placed, walls are decorated with pictures, family photos, diplomas and letters. The most poetical and fairy tale interior style is the modernist style, 